Hi, this is DIY Just from DIY Nexus. Today, a friend asked me if I could check out a ratchet his dad had given him years ago. It's a vintage Craftsman USA made 3 8 inch drive ratchet with a distinctive V-shaped selector switch. These were made from 1959 to sometime in 1966. They are commonly referred to as a flying V or, in Craftsman's own documents, a butterfly selector ratchet. This one looks to be in great shape, but sadly it's totally locked up, both the selector and the anvil itself. Before you say anything, yes, we could take it back to Sears for a warranty swap, but we don't want to do that. It was given to a friend by his father years ago. Let's disassemble it and see if we can bring it back and keep this piece of history in his family. Here are the tools we're going to use. I'm using a set of angled needle nose pliers. These are slightly smaller craftsman ones. They work great for this. A small flathead screwdriver. In this case it's also craftsman. You don't need to use this specifically, but this is a specialized ratchet rebuilding tool from Snap-on. I'll put some description of it down below. Some lubricants. Some cleaner. And a hammer. I'll put links to these items below. If you buy anything through the links, it'll help support us, and we appreciate it. We'll start by attempting to disassemble it here. I'm a little worried because it's so frozen up. You have to actually squeeze these two metal tabs together, and then pull. Same thing goes on the back. Squeeze the tabs below the selector lever together and pull up. And I'm not having much luck and I don't want to beat it up too much. So we're going to try a different method to loosen this up to start. Alright, I put the ratchet into an ultrasonic cleaner with some hot water, some super clean and a little bit of vinegar to try to break up the rust or whatever was going on inside. I also, once it was warmed up, gave it a couple taps with a hammer and it came free. It feels horrible and doesn't work very well, but now we'll try to take it apart and I suspect I'm going to get it. Squeeze those two clips, and that came off, and we just pull this straight out. And actually, it doesn't look as bad as I thought. But we'll get it cleaned up further. Let me pull the selector lever off. Or try. And that's what you get. Lastly down here is the pole. And behind it you can see there's a bearing. And that bearing has a spring inside, or below it. So when you pull this pole out, that bearing may want it to go somewhere. So keep a close eye. There's the ball, and you can see the spring. And 
Now we have it fully disassembled. We're going to give it a good cleaning, inspect everything, and put it back together. I placed everything in the ultrasonic cleaner for a few minutes, followed by wiping down all the parts with brake clean. Now that we have all the parts clean, we're going to do a quick inspection to see if there's any damage. If there is, rebuild kits aren't available for these at your local Sears anymore. There are some available on eBay or online, but they're a bit pricey. And some parts do interchange from other ratchets, so if you do have a part that you need to replace, consider looking at newer or older kits. Starting with the handle body, it looks pretty good. You always want to check to make sure that nothing inside in the machining here has been gouged out or failed miserably. This actually wasn't very rusted inside. And I didn't make mention of it earlier, but these early models have an oil port. You want to make sure that that ball functions properly. Then we have the spring. Looks like it's intact. And the ball which in this case is here but the surface is a little bit damaged and these balls are a standard size so if we wanted to replace this if it was important to us we could probably buy a generic ball that would work just fine to replace it <laughs> onto the pole and this is in excellent condition you want to check these teeth I was very surprised for this ratchet being so locked up that these are still quite sharp and nice. On to the anvil ratchet part itself. You can of course look at these teeth. They're in good shape. There are some marks on them, but they're all intact and not rough to the touch. We're also going to check this ball for function. It's a little bit sticky, but it does work. So when we lubricate it, we're going to spray something in there to help. Cover plate. It's in excellent shape. Retaining ring. Selector switch. These are impossible to find new anymore. This one's in pretty good shape. Chrome plating starting to come off, but it's nice and its retaining ring. All good. So now we're going to lubricate the parts and reassemble it. Originally this would have been lubricated with a light machine oil, like 3-in-1 oil. All the parts themselves, assemble it, and then actually put a little bit extra in through this hole. I spoke to the original owner and because this is going to be more of a piece of memorabilia for him, he'd like me to lubricate it with a modern lubricant. I'm going to use Super Lube. If you'd like more information about ratchet lubrication, check out another video that I've made. I'll put a link in the description below. If at any time he wants to change it back, since the ratchet's free now, it can be disassembled, cleaned, and we can go to the machine oil. We're just going to put a light coating on all of the parts where metal touches metal. I use the lube to stick the ball to the spring. This helps keep it from falling over. Thank you. 
Here comes the tricky part. When we have to insert the pawl back into the body, which has this small bow ball bearing tenuously held by grease. So, you could just try to put it in here and kind of jam it in, but there's also a special tool made for this. I'm going to cheat and use the tool. To use the tool, you put the ball bearing basically right underneath this little tab here and push down and hold down. Then we can put the pawl inside. So I'm going to set it down to try to do it. So, let's go like this. As promised, before we install this, I'd like to get some lube into this ball bearing. I'm going to use a small flat bladed screwdriver to depress the ball, and then I'll spray some deep creep into the area and get it to seat all the way in there. Going up and down with the ball to get it to fall right in. Pretty good. Then I'll wipe off the excess. Now it's time to lube this up and install it. It's all assembled. I'm going to give it a quick wipe down and we'll give it a try. Okay, it's all done and back together. Selector switch has a good feel. Ratchet works pretty well. All in all, I'm very happy with how it came out. I'm excited because when I return this to my friend, he should be happy that it's back in working order. Let me know what you think or if you have any suggestions in the comments below. And if you like this video, please subscribe and give us a thumbs up. As always, thanks for watching.